Today I'm going to teach you how to transform into her. Madge Bellamy was a silent film star from the 20s. She's our starlet for cancer. Not only does she look like a cancer, she is a cancer and her life story, y'all, she's a cancer through and through. <laughs> Madge worked her ass off to break into Hollywood. Somehow she makes it and then it was the late 1930s when silent films start transitioning into the talkies. A lot of actors' careers ended right then and there. Clara Bow, who looks identical to Madge, struggled a ton once talkies came around because she's hearing her heavy Brooklyn accent on recording for the first time. A lot of actors weren't even given a chance or if they were, they just failed their sound tests. Not Madge. She starred in Fox's first dialogue film. Then they wanted her to star in this film the woman from hell but it was this actor Robert Armstrong's first time directing and Madge was pissed. <laughs> Objectively I know that this brow block does not look good on me but subjectively I think it's kind of a cert. She's like I'll only do this movie if I get to choose the director. Fox tries to negotiate with her they're like you can choose the leading men. She said rip up my contract. In a last ditch effort to save the relationship, Fox actually buys a movie specifically for Madge to star in. The film was The Trial of Mary Dugan and here's the crazy part. For penciling in her brows, I'm starting out really wide and I'm drawing as straight of a line as I can till I hit the arch, then I drag it right down. The plot of that movie, The Trial of Mary Dugan, is about a courtroom trial where a showgirl is accused of killing her millionaire lover. Remember that. With the eyeshadow, I'm just trying to really round out my eyes and kind of get rid of this almond shape that I have. And I'm doing that by focusing the eyeshadow high right here, and I'm not focusing it in the outer corner like we usually would now. Pop in a little bit of white in the waterline. This is far from the only example of Madge having diva behavior, but this is what made Fox finally terminate her contract and effectively terminate her career. So with the eyeliner here, I'm following that same shape as the eyeshadow crease, right? So we're gonna take it up high, just like that crease, and then we'll drop it down. She'd later go on to star in the cult classic White Zombie, but by then it was like too little too late. Just setting this cream liner with some black shadow. She would resigned to doing like low budget films. From there she couldn't get any more of those, so she had to do like plays and she claimed that her troupe was super mean to her. So she ends up having to work at a Bank of America just to make money. Her showbiz career is over and she remains out of the headlines until... 1943. I love her spiky lashes here, so I just applied these. Madge has some very full cheeks, so I'm just popping some white highlight on the apples of my cheeks to kind of emulate that, and then also down my nose bridge to widen it a little bit like hers. So where we left Madge, she's working at Bank of America. She meets this guy named Albert Murphy, and they start seeing each other for five years. So after five years, they've agreed to be in like a common law marriage. This guy up and leaves her to marry a model. Madge is not happy. <laughs> Madge starts stalking him. She buys a bang bang. One night she ends up hiding outside of his car while he's at a nightclub. When he comes outside, she three times at her millionaire lover, literally the plot of the trial of Mary Dugan. And this was like for their time breaking the internet, I guess like breaking the printing press, right? It's in papers everywhere. And if she wasn't already like canceled or disliked, this definitely did it for her. Like she's canceled by 1940 standards. And if there's one thing I know about cancers, if they're committing a crime, it's gonna be a crime of passion. <laughs> I love this lipstick shape from White Zombie. So we're gonna go ahead and conceal our lips and do that. <laughs> I went all over my base with a second layer of powder foundation. I feel like in those times you could just get away with super powdered makeup and that's why they all look so smooth. But on the cheeks and under the eyes I used the RCMA no color powder so we could keep that like white, bright, full cheek look that Madge has. I never really see her blush pick up on camera. I can't imagine that they would send her out there without it though. So we're gonna just do the old school smile, find the apples of your cheeks, and only add a little bit of this. Madge ended up living until she's 90 years old. She passed away in 1990. I read that she was essentially in poverty until like the 80s where she got lucky with some like real estate plot of land. We've got a little cheap Amazon wig. This wig is actually pretty perfect. So I'm just trying to get a little bit of frizzies going to make it look a little more real. I also read that in the 80s after she came across some of that money that she dedicated a lot of time to civil rights and feminist movements. I had a hard time verifying that though so if anybody knows more on that subject I'd love to know let me know. I'm gonna work some dry shampoo through this because it really helps with all the shininess that comes with like the cheaper wigs. I layered some pearls and my B and Boleyn necklace because B for Bellamy and then I added this first stole 
And here is the final look! Let me know if you prefer this format where I talk about the history of these ladies a little bit or if you just like it when I stick to the makeup. Bye!